Hey Stampers, today I'm going to show you how to make a fabulous Christmas card using paper towel as your background. So when you're thinking about those textures for the back of your cards, you know, instead of the embossing folders and things like that, you should think about textiles such as maybe paper towel, tin foil, and that sort of thing. So today's card is going to be made with the Beautiful Season stamp set. There it is. You see this fabulous texture back here? Yes, that's paper towel. So I'm really excited about this card and I think that you'll enjoy making it as well. All right, so what are you gonna need to make this beautiful season card? Well, first off, you're gonna need some real red paper. So I've got real red paper and I'll put the dimensions on brainyscards.com, so don't worry about that if you don't get these right now. Um, you're also gonna need Always Artichoke. You've got a uh, four inch by five and a quarter piece of Always Artichoke, the same with Very Vanilla. And then you're going to need some uh, watercolor paper. Stampin' Up! watercolor paper is, is phenomenal. Um, I love it. As a matter of fact, I accidentally ran out of watercolor paper when I was at a show out of town and I had to run to my local craft store. I bought some. Well, it didn't work as well with our crayons or our markers. So I have a testimony that Stampin' Up! watercolor paper is the bomb. So I recommend it. Love it. Okay. So watercolor paper is awesome. You'll see here the beautiful season stamp set. We love that. Love this bird. It is on page. It is in the Christmas area, um, in the Christmas pages of your Stampin' Up! catalog. So it is there still. And then the Come to Bethlehem, I'm going to use the Merry Christmas from this stamp set. But you could use any uh, Merry Christmas or um, Happy Holidays that you'd like or Season's Greetings. All right, so to make this card, you're also going to see that I framed my... Um, watercolor paper with my curly label punch. So I punched four real red curly labels. That's how I did that and I'll kind of give you more detail on how I did that as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and fold our real red cardstock. If you've watched my tutorials before, I kind of like to start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to pull out my Tombow glue and I just folded my real red cardstock in half. I'm going to pull in my very vanilla. Very Vanilla is for the inside. I am, um, I am really big on always putting, um, what do I want to say, like a white piece or a cream piece on the inside of your card. Okay, so you're wondering, well, why is she putting it on the top? You know, I just find it's just so much easier to put it on the top. Flip it over, and there you go. Now we're ready to go. Pretty cool, right? It's a good little trick. All right, so that was the inside of my card. Now we're going to add our Always Artichoke piece. And right now, we're just really framing it. A lot of the girls that come to my classes always say, why do you layer so much cardstock? Well, you know, I just like the way that it looks. I like the way the colors all bring, they all tie in together with my image here in the front. So that's why I do that. Okay, so now we've got our card started. We've got the inside, and we have got our Always Artichoke piece. So now the fun part, that great background. So I just went and uh, went downstairs looking in the kitchen for something fun and I came across uh, some paper towels. So how cool would that be, right? Let's find the little seam there. Okay, so we've got ourselves some paper towel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this paper towel, we're going to grab our cutting board, and I am going to cut my paper towel on my cutting board, just as I would paper, and I am going to cut it at three and three quarters because it's actually my third, um, it's my third layer. And then I'm going to cut, and what I'm going to do is because this little end here is kind of curling, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get myself a nice straight edge. And then I'm going to cut it again at five. There we go. So that is my paper towel. Now, as I just did this, I realized that I cut it the other way. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the paper towel, the grain of the paper towel, I want it to go up and down. So I actually cut it so that it would go that direction. And that's not really what I'm looking for. So I'm going to cut it one more time at three and three quarter, and then I'm going to turn my paper towel and cut it again at five. All right, perfect. Now I've got everything that I need. We'll throw the little scraps away. I'll set that off to this side. Now this was the fun part. How did I get that great texture onto the paper towel? What I did is I took an old olive um, stamp pad, and what I started to do is I just started to kind of rub it on my paper towel. Take a look at that. Oh, how cool is that, right? Yeah, it's really cool looking. So I just kind of rubbed, used the uh, stamp pad to kind of put the ink, and I just kind of did a forward motion rubbing that ink onto 
that paper towel and it is awesome yeah isn't that the coolest thing I just love it love it love it now how do you put the paper towel onto that um, that always artichoke well you're gonna need some mini glue dots I just have some Stampin' Up mini glue dots they're awesome um, I have a tendency you have a tendency to kind of miss some of them so make sure if you use them in a class or um, by yourself that you're really careful that you don't waste them because it's pretty easy to miss them because um, they are about every what half inch or so apart so what I did is I just put a mini glue dot on each corner and then sometimes to meet in the middle a little bit to kind of hold it all down there we go so I put my mini glue dots on there now I'm gonna center this paper towel piece right in the middle of my always artichoke and my card is coming along beautifully oh I think you're gonna love it alright so there you go it's centered in the middle of my always artichoke. I think it's looking good so far. Okay, we're gonna put all that aside and now we're gonna go on to our bird. I just, this is, um, I, I do a retreat every year in Pinehurst, North Carolina and um, this was one of our technique classes and it was watercoloring. And so I showed the ladies several different ways to watercolor but I'm gonna incorporate a couple of ways here today. So what are you gonna need? Well, I always have an extra piece of paper towel which I can just use this scrap and then I've got some watercolor paper here, and I believe I cut my paper at three and three quarter, um, three and three quarter by three and a quarter, I believe, is what I cut it. But I'll have it on my website for sure. Now, what I'm doing here is I've just basically mounted my clear mount stamp, and I've got stays on black. The reason that I'm using this stays on is because it's a permanent, um, a permanent ink. It uh, definitely is, is good for porous surfaces. I'm gonna make sure and ink that up really, really, really good because the watercolor paper will accept the ink really well and you want it to get kind of, let's see, I kind of put that off and I kind of look here. We're gonna push really hard, hope for a really good image there. Oh, love it. Take a look at that, isn't that cool? Yeah, I just love it. Okay, so that was stays on ink and we just push that on our watercolor paper. We're gonna set our image aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in the, now you can use the aqua painter or the blender pen, but my most favorite thing is the aqua painter. I just love the watercolor, and Stampin' Up! has these fabulous crayons. I don't know if you've seen them before, but they're called Water Wonder Crayons. They come in all of our color families. They are so much fun. I mean, I just feel like such an artist um, when I'm using them, even though I'm, I'm well, I guess I can call myself an artist, right? Um, Okay, so take a look here. How did I get the lighter color with the leaves? Well, I'm going to show you a couple different ways. We're going to use the crayons, but we're also going to use the markers. If you didn't know it, um, the Stampin' Up! markers, you can deposit ink onto your watercolor paper and then use your aqua painter to blend it. And the aqua painter is basically just a pen. It's got water in it. And as you squeeze it, the water comes down to the tip, and that's what's going to blend your colors. Um, and I just use a paper towel if I get too much water. All right, so I think we're, uh, we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is, um, do you see that? There's these little lines on these markers, and I tell you, I just always open it the wrong way, even though I know that's there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my, um, I've got Lucky Limeade here, and because it's a lighter green, I'm just gonna go ahead and color my leaves, just kind of real quickly, nothing crazy. And then what I'm gonna do is take my Aqua Painter, and it's already got water in there and I'm gonna use my aqua painter to just really kind of blend that green a little bit so move that ink around and then once that ink is moved around then now we've got a lot of leaves here so we'll just have to kind of keep playing with it until we get it perfect and we're gonna kind of blend that through there that's, I love, love, love watercoloring. You know, you can watercolor with your blender pen. It's got a more of a fine point. The water's in there, and you you can't control as how much like the the amount of water that comes out of the pen like you can on the aqua painter. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I really like the aqua painter because I can get like a really wet. Um, what do I want to a wet more um, watercolored effect? Whereas with the blender pen. Not, not as much, but you definitely can, um, can do a lot of the same things. So I like both of those. 
So you've got the watercolor crayons, you've got your markers that you can use with your blender pen. You can also take your stamp pad and squeeze it. That's right, you can squeeze your stamp pad. And uh, by doing that, you can pick up the ink with your aqua painter and then apply it to your watercolor paper on your image. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Okay, so I've got my leaves done. There you go, you can see I've got my leaves well on their way. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and I think what I'm going to do is I have got soft suede here. So I'm going to use my soft suede crayon. And all I'm doing is coloring onto the watercolor crayon. And I'm going to use my aqua painter. And I'm going to color just kind of a light brown shade to my bird here. So what I always tell the ladies is go ahead and apply, in a sense, maybe a base color. The, the base color that you're looking for your, your image to be. And then once you have that base color, once it soaks in, We'll kind of wipe that color off, and I'll go back and I'll get an espresso or maybe a chocolate chip, and then I'll come back in and I'll add my definition to my bird. And so always remember, let it dry just a little bit or let it soak in, and then you can go back in with that darker color and start to add the depth. And that is really what's going to make your image pop. I promise you, I promise you. And uh, so definitely just kind of, so as I'm going, I don't know if you can see that very well, but my bird is coming along beautifully. I love him. My mother-in-law loves birds, so I'm always looking for a beautiful bird to make for her so that she can send out to her friends. All right, so I love, love birds. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my, um, my aqua painter and just real carefully here, I'm gonna real quickly and carefully touch up on my, my limb. I've got some branches here and things. And remember, you're watercoloring, and you want it to look like you painted it. So, you know, don't don't worry if you get out of the lines a little bit. I definitely do, but I think that just kind of makes it real. I mean, you want to remember, this is a homemade gift. It's a card. It's a gift from you. So you don't want it to be totally perfect, because um, then they'll think you bought it. So you got to, you know, keep it real, right? Okay, there you go. There you go. So I'm well on my way. Now you see I've got these really cool looking um, that holly berries or little, little berries on there. So I have got uh, the watercolor uh, wonder crayons in the Brights collection. Remember they come in all the color families. So I've got it here in the Brights collection. And so I'm going to go ahead and you know and I think one day my real red had fallen out of here. So I might have to just go ahead and play with maybe a, a razzleberry and maybe mix a, a ruby red or something like that um, to try to pull my red off. But I'm going to show you a really cool trick. So now what I'm doing is I am just coloring my little berries, coloring them in red because, you know, loving it so far. And I'll show you exactly what I got working here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a couple of my berries um, maybe not colored. I'm going to let a couple of them be lighter, some be darker. And I think that's what gives you that really great depth is when some are lighter and some are darker. But this is the cool trick. So you've got your Stampin' Up! Jewels, your Jewel Rhinestones. And if you have a red Sharpie, that is the key. These things are awesome. So you take your red Sharpie and what you're going to do is I think I used the smaller jewels. Let me see here. Yep, actually I, I did. I used, um, I actually use these medium jewels. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually take your Sharpie and color on some of these jewels. It's a really cool trick. So next time you are in Staples or in any store that their Sharpies are on sale, you are going to think about a Sharpie in a completely different way. Trust me. Pretty cool. So what we're going to do is I am just going through and taking my little rhinestones off of my, uh, my pad here. And I am putting them on my bird one at a time. And I'm just adding it to the branches. And it dries. This, this, um, this Sharpie dries really fast. So you don't have to worry about that. And in all honesty, you can put as many on here as you want to put on here. But for time's sake, I just did four today. So there you go. Take a look at that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. That just pops. It's so much fun. And in all honesty, you could take your Sharpie and go back in. And you could even make some of these other little berries even... Um, a deeper red if you wanted to. So there's a lot of ways that you can play with that and add texture and depth. So there we have our image. So let's put all this aside. Now how did I frame the bird? What I did to or the um, watercolor paper. What I did is I took four of my curly labels that I punched. 
Now notice that they are they are not perfectly square. So I set all of them the same direction on my um, on my pad here, my cutting pad. And then I took my X-Acto knife and I cut from corner to corner right here. So I cut from one corner to this corner on each one of my curly labels. And then by doing that, now I can stick my watercolor paper through there. So you'll see here now I have got a nice little frame for my watercolor paper. And it just goes in there perfectly. So you can go ahead and just kind of put your little corners in there. And this is a great, great uh, card, say, for somebody who loves birds. Trust me, it is, uh, it is really a stunning card, especially seeing and uh, knowing that that paper towel behind there is really fun if you're a crafter. Okay, so there you go. There's the start of my card. Just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my Stampin' Dimensionals because uh, I, love, I love how it looks popped up. And so that I don't have to waste, I don't waste, I'm just going to use my Stampin' Dimensional for two purposes. I'm going to use it to pop up my card, but I'm also going to use it to hold my curly label punch down, my little um, punched piece down to my card. So I'm going to use it for a couple of different reasons. And you know, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and put a couple Stampin' Dimensionals on the corners as well. Just because, you, you know, to kind of give the card a little bit of extra support because it is sticking to paper towel, so it would be a good idea. All right, so there we have it. We're just going to stick it here to the center of my paper towel. There we've got it. It sounds funny to say a paper towel on your card, but we're, uh, we're well on our way. All right, so then as far as the ribbon goes, I just used some gross grain ribbon. I think it's a 1 8 inch, or, um, and I just cut a little piece. All I'm going to do is just tie a little knot here with my, uh, in my hand, just tie a little knot and pull that tight and then you're going to use your Stampin' Up! mini glue dots and you're going to put a little mini glue dot to the back and we're just going to put this right here in our branch there you go now I like to use fabric scissors when I cut my ribbon I just find it's they just are so much of a cleaner of a cut but you can use your snips to do that so then you can add that on there perfectly just like that now we can add a greeting to our card Let's see here, what did I pull out? I pulled out a Merry Christmas Greetings from Come to Bethlehem. I'm just gonna use um, some old olive and I've got some more of my um, watercolor paper because this was just extra. We're gonna stamp it straight down, straight up. And then I'll put a couple mini glue dots behind that just to add a little something more to that. Um, just add a little bit more pop to that. And also, because I'm not sure how well the glue would be accepted on my paper towel. So this way, I know it's going to work. Perfect. There we go. And you know, I may have made that just a little too long in my cutting. So we'll just snip it. Perfect. Okay, there you go. I love it. So this is from the Beautiful Season Stamp Set. And if you'll notice on this card, I actually took Crystal Effects. And the crystal effects is what I put on there to add that, that shimmer. Um, I'm not going to do the whole card for you right now, but I will kind of just put that on there a little bit and kind of show you exactly what I had done. I wanted the card to kind of look like it was glistening. Maybe it was in the morning and the bird was a little wet. Maybe the leaves were a little wet. And it just adds a little bit more, um, I don't know, just a little bit something more to your card. So I love crystal effects for so many reasons. And Stampin' Up! does sell it. So that is, uh, that is what I use to add that texture. So uh, I, go, I hope you guys have fun making your Christmas cards this year. Definitely go around, look around your house for fun things to craft with because they are everywhere. Um, and definitely stay tuned because I have more coming for you. So thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great day.